chance to prove our suspicions about Emmerich. Head to the central base camp in Afghanistan and recover that AI pod. It's time we purge Diamond Dogs of that traitorous parasite once and for all. Please select a mission. Please select a mission.
Please select a landing zone. Heading to Afghanistan. suspicions about Emmerich. Head to the central base camp in Afghanistan and recover that AI pod. It's time we purge Diamond Dogs of that traitorous parasite once and for all. Marker placed. Marker placed. Betty has infiltrated and the map has been updated. Detected. The map has been updated. 
Caution. Sandstorm approaching. Supplies requested. Supply drop complete.
Black Pod launch confirmed. We'll pick it up. I wonder what kind of secrets are buried in it. I'll let you know if we learn something. Got a report from the intel team. Remember how the man on fire was crushed by Sahalanthropus? Well, the Soviets recovered his body. Could he really be dead? Boss, head for Yaha Obu's supply outpost and secure the man on fire's body. If Skullface was right, and a thirst for revenge can turn a man into a demon and keep the dead alive, then this man on fire who's been coming after us ever since you woke up, well, that just might be what's left of our old friend Volgan. Support helicopter Roger. requested. Extraction arrived at Mother Base.
Please select a landing zone. should enable you to sneak past enemies. Enemy presence detected. The map has been updated. Presence detected. The map has been updated.
Enemy presence detected. The map has been updated. Enemy presence detected. The map has been updated. Enemy presence detected. The map has been updated. Enemy presence detected. The map has been updated. Detected. The map has been updated. Guard post captured. Buddy has infiltrated Alpo. The map has been updated. placed. You have arrived at your destination. Enemy presence detected. The map has been updated. You gotta extract him.
approaching. Detected. What has been updated? You gotta extract him. Hey, That's the target. Support helicopter Roger. requested.
Extraction arrived at Mother Base. Side ops list updated. Please select a mission. Unit dispatched. Please select a landing zone. Heading to Central Africa.
around snake Detected. The map has been updated. Enemy presence detected. The map has been updated. Drum. They must use their color to tell them apart. That one being filled with gasoline. Forces of Africa, CFA for short. These guys are all business. Mercenary work is straight. That's the target.
presence detected. The map has been updated. Detected. Map has been updated. Extraction arrived at Mother Base. Enemy presence detected. The map has been updated. Detected. The map has been updated.
captured. Presence detected. The map has been updated. Enemy presence detected. The map has been updated. Weather will clear shortly. Mm. 
Enemy presence detected. The map has been updated. Presence detected. The map has been updated. Side Ops list updated. Support helicopter Roger. requested. Arriving shortly at LZ. Side Ops list updated.
Commencing platform construction. Please select a mission. Unit dispatched. Unit dispatched. Please select a mission. Boss, information warfare is more than just intel gathering. It also means disrupting enemy communications. Your mission is to punch a hole in the comms network between the Soviet outposts. Oh, That'll cut off their means to call in reinforcements. Technically, we were given this mission by a Western-backed Arab organization supporting the guerrillas. But it'll also give us a leg up in the future. Take a look at the location of the Eastern Communications Post on your iDroid. Head there and destroy its comms equipment. He who controls information controls operations. Just look at Cypher. Good luck, boss. Mission accepted. Heading to Afghanistan. Heading to Afghanistan. Disable a Soviet's reinforcement system by putting a hole in their base-to-base -base comms network. Head for the Eastern Communications Post and destroy its comms equipment. First, use the binoculars to locate the communications equipment at the facility.
Marker placed. Marker placed. Marker placed. Marker placed. Enemy presence detected. The map has been updated. The map has been updated. arrived at mother base.
detected. The map has been updated.
this is Raven territory. I heard once that some indigenous peoples in Canada and Alaska deify the common raven as a totem. Enter the Eastern Communications Post and destroy the target equipment. Its location is on your iDroid.
You have arrived you made at your destination. First, use the binoculars to locate the communications equipment at the facility. Marker placed. First, you have to identify the targets. Recon the site with your binoculars. Once you know where the targets are, take them out to put their network out of action. How you do that is up to you. the time doesn't stop while you use the iDroid. You can even move around while using it, but pay attention to your surroundings. communications post and destroy the target equipment. Its location is on your iDroid.
You have arrived at your destination. You made it. First, use the binoculars to locate the communications equipment at the facility.
Destination. injury. It won't heal on its own. You'll need to treat it with first aid. Thank <laughs> you. 
antennas. Post captured. The map has been that antenna is one of the targets. Nice. That's the second one. That wasn't the last of them, though. Keep going. has been updated. Support helicopter requested. Sun will rise momentarily.
Extraction arrived at Mother Base. Mission complete. Great work. Please select a mission. Unit dispatched. Please select a mission. are launching an offensive against the Soviets. Our job is to eliminate as much as we can of the Soviet mechanized unit that will come in as reinforcements. The more vehicles you can take out, the higher our pay will be. But the mission's a failure if you can't manage to eliminate a single one. A race against the clock, with plenty of targets to choose from. Show them your best stuff, boss. Mission accepted.
as many enemy combat vehicles as you can. For this mission, we're back up for the guerrillas' offensive. That means our mission isn't over until theirs is. Keep an eye on the remaining time. Also, bear in mind that you'll fail the mission if you don't take out a single vehicle. As for payment, the more vehicles, the bigger our paycheck. So give them a real fireworks show. Check the target's locations on your map. Once you've spotted incoming reinforcements, their location will be added to your iDroid too. Be careful down there, boss! Updated. Updated. Supply drop complete. Please select a strike point. Guard post captured. Strike requested. Strike will commence shortly.
Please select a strike point. Strike requested. transporting a prisoner. It's not part of the mission. Do you think you can bust him loose? Just if you have the time to spare. The map has been updated. Please select a strike point. Strike requested. Detected. The map has been updated. You've got other targets closing in. Detected. You can check their predicted route on your iDroid. Updated. The map has been updated. Please select a strike point. Strike requested. Bye. 
select a strike point. Strike requested. The guerrilla's offensive will be ending soon. Boss, there's still time left. Take out as many vehicles as you can. Please select a strike point. Strike requested. Strike will commence shortly. Please select a strike point. Strike requested. Three minutes remaining. Marker placed. Strike will commence shortly. Nice work, boss. The targets are almost history. Boss, we have new targets. Check your iDroid for the details. The map has been updated.
Guerrilla's offensive was a success. The day is theirs. And our mission is complete. Time to fall back. Leave the hot zone as soon as you can. Support helicopter Roger. requested. base. Mission complete. Whew. At least you made it out in one piece.
Please select a mission. Please select a mission. Please select a landing zone. Buddy has infiltrated Alpo. The map has been updated. Marker placed. Marker placed. Detected. The map has been updated. Presence detected. The map has been updated. Enemy presence detected. The map has been updated. Рассказывал, что у него на голове рот, что он сражается в поддержимый демон. Агатый мужик. Да он, небось, не паниковал, сел с катушек. Может бы. Фа 
fire. Select a strike point. Support helicopter requested. Please select a strike point. Strike requested. No targets remaining. Ending attack run and we'll stand by an LZ. This 
Marker placed.
have arrived at your destination. The weather will clear shortly. Extraction arrived at Mother Base. <coughs> Development project has been added. I barely recognize you, Colonel. Skullface used your thirst for revenge against Big Boss, did he? Boss, I've updated the mission list. We've received some new job offers. The details are on your iDroid. Development project has been added.
Caution. Rain approaching. Sun will rise momentarily. Roger. Stay back. It's too dangerous. Hey. Back up, kid. I said no. You have to stay back. Some things can't be helped. Back to your quarters. What's going on? Shabani. Mayaka Nine Kingo Ya Shabani. It's down there. Hey! The tank at the bottom is filled with chlorine disinfectant. One whiff and you'll suffocate. Don't even. How could you let it fall down there anyway? to recover the body. What kind of stunt was that? Trying to panic us?
proceed. Now, I know you're an expert when it comes to solo infiltrations, but now you have buddies who will fight alongside you. Use your iDroid to deploy them whenever you like. The role of your buddies is to support you during missions. There's more than one way for them to do that. To get the most out of a buddy's abilities, you need to give the right order for the situation. with the Shagoha during Operation Snake Eater 20 years ago. Despite suffering severe burns to his entire body, he still clung to life. After you left Seleniarsk, Volgan's body was taken to a research institute in the outskirts of Moscow. But modern medicine couldn't explain why he was still alive. Not that the colonel was any ordinary man to begin with. That constant electric current he had running through his body that he could unleash at will, to be honest, I was always uncomfortable around him. Thought I might get electrocuted just by standing nearby. The Institute studying him was tasked with investigating and developing human paranormal abilities. The comatose Volgan was used to further the Soviet Union's research into such abilities. But not long ago, the facility burned to the ground. And Volgan's body was never found among the rubble. Even though the fire started in the room where they were keeping him. This occurred at around the same time you woke up. If Skullface was right, and a thirst for revenge can turn a man into a demon and keep the dead alive, then this man on fire who's been coming after us ever since you woke up, well, that just might be what's left of our old friend Volgan. It's not over yet. Back in 64, in Seleniarsk, you brought his plans for a utopia down in flames. That grudge is what's keeping him alive. The day the research facility holding Volgan burned down, a Soviet jumbo passenger jet happened to crash nearby, far away to the north of that hospital in Cyprus. On board the plane was a young boy who was being studied at the same facility. The plane fell to Earth from over 8,000 feet, but the boy's body was the only one not recovered. At almost exactly the same time as the crash, Volgan awoke in that facility. According to the Research Institute's documents, the gifts this boy demonstrated included psychokinesis and telepathy. To protect his mind from being inundated with other people's thoughts, he always wore a kind of gas mask. A rudimentary form of psychic insulation, apparently. We don't know where this boy is, but if Skullface is connected to him, we may cross paths with him yet. This boy is part of a new age where nothing we understand about the world makes sense anymore. Don't let your guard down. So what were they doing at Enzoya Badia, Balu? That facility with all the people laid out in rows. The abandoned factory Shibani was held in. It is precisely as you guessed. Black Anna was coding languages into the vocal cord parasites. They infected the subjects with the parasites, then made an incision in the throat to expose the vocal cords. That allowed them to play recordings of a desired language directly to the parasites. And the parasites learned the languages that way. That's some teaching method. I just don't get how a bunch of bugs had the brain power for it. They don't. Do not judge them by human standards. They do not learn as a function of intellect. Then how do they do it? What language the parasites react to is coded into their genes. You could expose the Japanese strain to English for years, and it would never learn the language and react to it. The pronunciation, rhythm, and structure are different. But what about, say, Spanish and Portuguese? Linguistically, the two are very close. Yeah, they're both Ibero-Romance languages. 
Even so, a Spanish language mating pair exposed to Portuguese will not copulate. Only when they hear Spanish. Only then. And the majority of their offspring will be the same. So it's a literal case of a mother tongue. But if that's so, I don't see how the different strains can be created in the first place. Well, among the many thousands of offspring, there may be just a few that react to Portuguese. You're talking about mutations. Correct. Playing the tapes helps to identify the mutant strains. Those specimens are then isolated and bred with one another. From their children, specimens that react more strongly to Portuguese can again be selected and bred. Repeating this process creates a strain that reacts solely to Portuguese and never to Spanish. Mutation and selection. No different to breeding roses. So you kept increasing the change over the generations, adapting them to languages from all over the world. Must have taken a hell of a lot of patience. More like patience. Just how many died for this? There's something I still don't get. In order to tell which larvae will react to Portuguese, you'd have to let them develop and then see which copulate. That means you'd need tens of thousands of guinea pigs. There's no way you could do that in a facility that small. For normal selective breeding methods, you would be right. But there is a more effective selection method when training the vocal cord parasites. <sighs> Go on. It is not only when mating that the parasites listen for language. Shortly before hatching, larvae display markedly increased activity in reaction to a particular language. The active eggs can be identified under a black light. So the eggs that react to Portuguese are selectively placed in the throats of subjects. So you see, narrowing down strains that react to the target language is an effective process. Though I'm sure that even so, many lost their lives to create the various strains. Taken against their will into that... that dungeon. There are two reasons for playing the tapes for the parasites. One, to isolate the eggs that respond to the target language. And two, to cause the specimens raised from the selected eggs to mate. I get how the system works. But why do they respond to language before they even hatch? It's not like they can mate from inside an egg. It is because the larvae learn the language before hatching. You mentioned that what language the parasites respond to is hard-coded into their genes, and that they don't have the brain power to actually learn a language. But then you say that the larvae at Nzoya Badiabulu were learning the languages in the egg. Your story doesn't add up. Your country is home to a unique songbird. The Japanese bush warbler. Sure, what of it? What a beautiful call it has. But no bush warbler can sing it perfectly at the start. As chicks, they can barely chirp at all. They must learn from their parents and other adult birds. Only then can they sing properly and attract females. So naturally, there are individual differences in each bird's call. Though they start on the same footing, each bird is influenced by its teachers. And the parasites are the same? Like the birds, the parasites have a genetic predisposition towards a particular language. But while in the egg, the larvae's ears are tweaked by listening to the voice of the host. This tweaking ensures that the grown parasites will react better to the host's speech pattern. Why would they have an ability like that? Well, there are distinct regional differences within even the same language. Rare is the language that has no unique dialects. Yes, learning the host's speech pattern before hatching attunes the larvae to whatever twist of pronunciation it will encounter. 
This adaptive ability is what makes them so formidable. I see. So a language requires selective breeding, but the parasites can learn dialects by themselves. Of course, having the egg stage larvae listen to the tapes in the factory was not meant to teach them. It was more important to use that trait of theirs to identify the mutated strains. As I mentioned earlier, is that really accurate enough to use as a weapon? You could wipe out a neighboring ethnic group by accident if their pronunciation is too close. What you say is true. In that sense, they are imperfect as ethnic cleansers. But for his purposes, they are good enough. His objective was not to exterminate any one ethnic group, but to render the world's lingua franca, English, inert. something I've been wondering. Why are you called Code Talker? During World War II, the U.S. military used the languages of different tribes, including the Navajo, as codes, right? I know the term Code Talker was used to mean people sent to the battlefield to speak in those codes. Were you one of them? Our mother tongue was indeed used for war. But I did not go. I was already over the conscription age. However, I was made to help craft the codes that were spoken. So in a wider sense, you could call me a code talker for that. Navajo is a complex language, and virtually no one outside the U.S. speaks it. The must have thought it was the perfect language to use as a code. Yeah, in the end, the Japanese never cracked it. The cipher is king in information warfare. Of course, they didn't simply speak in Navajo. They created substitutions for words according to a code book, and then translated those into our language. Young Diné was sent to the front lines of the Pacific Theater as code talkers. To fight is an honor for the Diné. They were the pride of our people. But I cannot say this history brings me joy. Words are alive. When they are spoken, life is breathed into them. They become a part of the listener. Our words were transformed into lifeless ciphers and used for war. This, after the Black Anna spent generations suppressing the language. Yeah, I'm sorry. So I guess we shouldn't be calling you Code Talker, huh? No, I do not mind. The reason Skullface called me Code Talker was because I also am responsible for coding language into the vocal cord parasites. I am the same as those young warriors, used for a cipher's sake. I must never forget that. The name, Code Talker, is a lesson carved into my being. You said Skullface ordered you to weaponize the vocal cord parasites, but you also said he wasn't the reason. And he wasn't. I was seduced by the parasites. That is a fact. <laughs> How? You mean from your curiosity as a scientist? That I cannot deny. But there is more to it. The story goes back to the 19th century. To my earliest memory. One day, a man from the government visited our Hogan. Our home. I cried as he yanked me from my mother's arms and took me away to an Indian boarding school. From that day forward, I became George. This was the name my teacher gave me. I was forced to give up my Diné name, forbidden from speaking anything but English. If we dared utter a word of filthy Navajo, the teacher made us eat a bar of soap. Yeah. That was the U.S. government's education policy for Native Americans. To erase our words was like erasing our people. Their education was tantamount to ethnic cleansing. Over time, the overt persecution of our language stopped. 
but to this day, it continues to be eaten away by the lingua franca, that is English. Many of the Diné outside the reservations can speak nothing else. And it isn't just our language. Across the world, minority languages are being destroyed by dominant languages. Many are on the verge of extinction. Hmm. Enter the vocal cord parasites. Yes. I began thinking that minority languages needed some sort of deterrent against dominant languages. In order that they, that their peoples and cultures would survive. It was then that I came across literature at the foundation claiming that man acquired language thanks to a type of parasite. One that distinguishes between languages as a precursor to reproduction. If I could just resurrect it, make it more pathogenic, I would have my deterrent against English. But I failed to hide that aim from Skullface. He noticed. Yes, I wanted to retaliate against the English language. Though never did I intend to actually use it as he planned. You know how the story ends. I was forced to study how to make the parasites compatible with all the world's languages. All but English. However, he in fact secretly isolated an English strain. I will not be held prisoner by the man's phantom. The English strain must not be allowed to exist either. A ruler's greatest wealth is not money or land. It is the number of individuals under his control. Subjects who work, consume, are there to be used as pawns in war. For a capitalist ruler, his people's power becomes his power. You are the same with your diamond dogs. You spin it with your speeches. But what you're doing is bringing as much talent as you can into your little domain. Every person another feather in your cap. Yes. Since ancient times, every civilization's ruler has had the same idea. When people unite under one will, they become stronger than the sum of their parts. And the one will is the ruler's will. And what do rulers use to bring people together? Language. In the Old Testament, it is written that only one language was spoken in Eden. A shared tongue that united all of humanity. Mankind eventually grew aware of its power and harnessed that strength to build a tower to the heavens. The mighty Tower of Babel. This angered God, who splintered the language of man, and the tower was never completed. Languages emerged, and the earth was divided as men went their separate ways. Every age is the same. A ruler's first order of business, after conquering new land, is to force his tongue on its people. Ancient Rome, Napoleon, and now Zero. English is wrecking havoc around the world right now. The British Empire tilled the land with war as its hoe, then began planting the seed that is English. Eventually, American capitalism became the new instrument. To play its game of wealth, you only had to abide by one rule, English. By exploiting people's desires, English has become a leash that people gladly wear around their necks, it would seem. Please select a mission.
Please select a mission.